Bible talk is gonna have you like David, not David. Mm -hmm, David. Okay, so boom. If you have your Bibles, you can find this story in 2 Samuel chapter 11. Okay, so here it's springtime, and this is the season where the kings went off to war. And if y'all know anything about David, one thing David gonna do, he gonna fight. But this time, everybody went to war, and David decides to stay home. So this one evening, David gets up, he's walking around his palace, and from the roof, he could see a woman bathing, and he says she was beautiful. So he sent somebody, and he was like, mm, go see who that woman is. So the man who went to go check on the woman, he comes back, and he tells David, that's Uriah's wife. David sent messengers to her, and he was like, okay, go get her. It's like, this woman must have been real beautiful, because the man just told you that that's somebody's wife, and you still okay so the woman's name is Bathsheba Bathsheba goes to where David is David sleeps with her and boom she's pregnant it happens just that fast be careful so David finds out that she's pregnant and he's like Lord we got to come up with a plan so he sends for Uriah to come out of the war so Uriah meets up with David and David is just fake chopping it up like oh how's the war going you know what's up so anyway, David tells Uriah, listen, go wash your feet, go home, go relax. So basically, Bathsheba was early enough in her pregnancy to where if Uriah came home at a specific time and he slept with her, nobody would have thought that that was David's baby. So when David sent Uriah home, Uriah never went home. He slept at the entrance of the palace. So David was like, Uriah, why didn't you go home? He was like, because my commander and all my soldiers are sleeping in front of the entrance. I'm going to sleep in front of the entrance too. So now David has to come up with a different plan. So he's like, okay, just stay one more day. I'll send you back to the war tomorrow. David invited Uriah over and David got him real drunk because he was like, okay, if I get him drunk and I send him home, this plan is going to work out. But Uriah got drunk and he still ain't go home. So because David's plan didn't work out, he ended up sending a message out saying to put Uriah on the front line of battle because he knew if he was on the front line, he was going to die. So Bathsheba finds out that her husband just died in the war and she mourned and after that, she went to David's house and became his wife. We're totally running out of time and I don't like to do this, but y'all gonna have to come back for a part two. two on David and how he stole somebody's wife. Oh, if y'all didn't watch that Bible talk, go back and watch it. So after Bathsheba becomes David's wife, the Lord sends Nathan to David. So Nathan goes to David and he begins to share this story. He's like, David, there's two men, a rich man and a poor man. And he's like, the rich man had all the sheep, all the cattle, but this poor man only had one little lamb. Now the rich man had more than enough to share. So a traveler came along and he went to the rich man asking for something, but the rich man was just too stingy and refused to share anything with him. So he literally took the only lamb that the poor man had and gave it to the traveler. So David gets so angry. He's like, where is this man? This man needs to die. And Nathan was like, yeah, you are the man. Now I know David was like, huh? Now, usually I summarize what the Bible says, but this right here, I need to read verbatim because it's crazy. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you all Israel and Judah. And if all this had been too little, I would have given you more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah with the sword and took his wife to be your own you killed him with the sword of ammonites now therefore the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of uriah to be your own this is what the lord says out of your own household i'm going to bring calamity on you before your very eyes i will take your wives and give them to the one who is close to you and he will sleep with your wives in broad daylight you did it in secret but i will do this thing in broad daylight before all israel what and this is david's response david told nathan i have sinned against the lord yeah you think so nathan tells david listen the lord has taken away your sin you're not gonna die but because you have done this your son is not gonna be able to live so david's son got very ill and he ended up passing so it's so many lessons that you can learn from the story of david and bathsheba so let's just go over a few first one is don't step out from your assignment Instead of going to the war, going out and doing his assignment, he decided the one time to stay home and all of this happened. So do not come out of your assignment because the moment that you come out of your assignment, it's an open field for the enemy. I don't think David took the time to sit back, sit down and realize how much God did for his life. God was like, I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. I placed you in a palace. Like I've done all this for you. And if it was just too little, I would have given you more. 
No matter how many blessings the Lord releases upon your life, stay in a place of reverence and fear of the Lord. This story also shows that nobody's perfect. We're imperfect people serving a perfect God. I love you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this Bible talk. And until the next one, Bible talk, we are going to be doing the birth of Moses. Okay, so boom. Let me give y'all a little backdrop first. This took place after Joseph has saved the whole country of Egypt from a famine. And I'll do a Bible talk on that later. So at this time, the Pharaoh that was in place did not like how there were so many Israelites because in his head, he was like, what if these Israelites come up against me and they side against the enemy and they take me down? He decided to oppress the Israelites and make them slaves in Egypt. Now, this did not work, okay? They were working really hard, but they were still populating very, very fast and more children were being born and this really made Pharaoh angry. So Pharaoh put an order in place and he was like, listen, every son that's born take them out because I don't want the boys to grow up and be strong men and attack me. Now the two midwives who delivered the children, they fear God. And when they heard this order, they were like, mm, no, Pharaoh, we're not doing this. We're not taking a child's life. So he got angry again and made another order and was like, okay, just throw them in the Nile River and basically let them drown. So now fast forward, we have this couple, the woman conceived, she's pregnant. And then when it's time to give birth, she sees that she has a baby boy. She hid the baby in the house for three months, and when she could not hide the baby no more, she grabbed the basket, grabbed the baby, put the baby in the basket, and put him at the edge of the river. And y'all will not believe who found him. Out of all people, Pharaoh's daughter. Now, she knew that he was an Israelite, but she seen the baby boy crying, and she just felt so bad. So his sister is watching this whole thing go down. She approaches the daughter and she's like, listen, um, do you want me to go find somebody to take care of him because he's so small? She was like, I'll pay somebody to take care of him. And when he grows older, he can come live with me. And then she named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. Let me tell you a little lesson from this story. When you are chosen by God and you are called, his protection and his hand will cover you same people that were supposed to take him out are the same people that had to raise him in royalty so know that the hand of the lord is on your life and you will be the story okay so boom moses grew up moses is no longer little baby moses that was in the basket before this story i want you to get your bibles and read it for yourself how moses and buried a man in the sand but i don't want to get banned on tiktok so let's just start from here so at this time, Moses is tending the flock of his father-in-law and just doing his everyday duties. He led the flock to a far side of the wilderness and came upon the mountain of God. And this is where Moses' whole life changed. An angel of God appeared in flames of fire within the bush. So Moses is like, how was that bush on fire but it's not burning up? So Moses goes to be nosy to see what's going on and he hears the voice of God call his name and say, Moses. Moses answered back to God and was like, here I am. God told Moses to take off his sandals because where he was standing was holy ground. Now Moses was hiding his face because he was way too afraid to look at God. Now God starts talking to Moses and he's like, I've been hearing the cry of my people and I see how they're oppressed. I am going to save the Israelites from the hand of the Egyptians. So God told Moses, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my Israelites out of Egypt. Moses is like, whoa, 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 me? Who am I to step up to Pharaoh and try to save the Israelites? So God is like, it's okay, I'll be with you. Moses is like, okay, okay, well, what if I go and they ask me who sent me? What am I supposed to say? So God is like, I am that I am. Tell them that I am sent you. He said, also relay the message, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses is still like, okay, well, what if they don't believe me when I say I am sent me? So Moses had a staff in his hand and God was like, throw that staff on the ground. Moses threw the staff on the ground and it turned into a snake. God was like, now grab it by his tail. Moses grabbed it by his tail and it turned back into a staff. Then God told Moses, he was like, put your hand in your cloak. Moses put his hand in his cloak and when he took it out, his hand was leprous. And God told him to put it back in. When he put it back in, he took it out, his hand was completely healed. God tells Moses, those are two signs that people should know I am God. And if they don't believe the first sign, they should believe the second sign. But if they don't believe the second sign, God told Moses to take water from the Nile River and to pour it on the ground. And when it poured on the ground, that it was going to turn into blood. Moses was still fighting God and he was like, you need to send somebody else. I have a stutter and speech problem. I don't want to do this. So then God got angry with Moses and then he sent his brother Aaron to help Moses with the assignment. 
I'm running out of time, but I'm going to put the lessons of this story down in the caption below.